Hello guys and welcome to this Marine Stack project tutorial. This is the third part in the full stack Marine blog application that we are creating using MongoDB, Express.js, React.js and Node.js. Now if you are new to the project, this is the third part as I just said. And in the first video we created the frontend using React. In the second video we created the API and then linked it or connected it to our mongodb database we created the api using node and express of course and in this video we are going to make sure the front end and the back end communicates with each other for those new to the project i'll just walk you through the finished demo and then we'll get right into the project if you already watched the first video then you probably don't need to rewatch this demo you can of course jump straight into the um, application or the API but for the sake of the newcomers or those who are not familiar with the project this is the home page of the project and these are posts that our authors or the users of the website have created of course if you come and you want to create a post you have to sign up and then sign in right but we are going to explore that later on in a minute so these are posts okay every post has a thumbnail a title a body the author and then a category the post belongs to as you can see that's the structure for every post you can click on the title to read more about the post so you click the title it brings you to the single page or the single post page for you to read more about that post all right and we can click on the author to see more posts that belongs to that author so we have nanado with three posts we can click on hajabin2 with two posts we can also click here on the title to read more i'm going to exit full screen here and it goes on like that okay also we can click on the category to see all posts that belongs to that category right so we have um for the education category we have one by nanado we have dramani and then we have ernest they all have posts that belongs to the um, education category you can click on business and we have two posts there and down here on the footer we can also click the categories here to see all the posts in that category right and when the category doesn't have any posts, we get this message which is cool so that's all for the home page, I think. And even here, you can still click on the author to see the post that belongs to the author, which is really cool. All right, now let's go to the authors page. And of course, we have all the authors or the users registered to the application. And Jendo has no posts. That's why we have this message. John Doe has only one post. And there's the post. We have Dramani with only one post as well. We have Nanado with three posts. So these are all the posts that belongs to Nanado. All right, so that's it. Now let's try and then sign up, okay, as a new user. So the name of this user is going to be Diana Ai. The email, I'm just going to do Diana at Gmail. The password is going to be Diana123 diana one two three okay if i make any mistake here for instance if i add another three to the confirm password let's see what happens passwords do not match right if i showed you know let me open this in a new tab real quick that's for the authors you can see that um, jane Doe has an email of jane at gmail.com okay so if you try to register jane gmail.com which already exists okay let's make sure this password actually is corrected we hit it and then we get email already exists okay now even if the password is still incorrect let's see we still get email already exists because it checks this first and we are going to integrate or uh, implement these checks by ourselves okay we are not going to use any third party um, package or anything like that we are going to do everything by ourselves all right now i'm going to make sure the password is correct or the password do match and then and the email is going to be diner so diner at gmail.com right and now let's register and we are 
signed up okay we've been able to sign up of course we are redirected here to sign in so diner at gmail.com here too i have some checks so this password is incorrect i get invalid credentials i should make sure it is correct so diner one two three we hit login and then we are signed in beautiful so now when we come to authors we should have diner i with no avatar okay so to create an avatar or to upload a user profile you can just hit this and i have some images here that i'm going to use so for diner i'm going to use this and then hit this check and boom we have it okay so now we come back to authors we have diner i with the avatar okay we can even change it again right so if i showed you this person with the nose mask I hit it again come back i have it okay but of course right now diana e has zero posts okay when we come here we don't have any post by diana e. so let's go ahead and then create one post and even here we can click here and then we can see that diana doesn't have any post right now let's go ahead and then create a new post i'm going to go to lorem epsom This website is just going to give me some dummy text. That's going to be the body or the description. I call it description, but of course it should be body. Okay. I'm going to select the category. I'm going to choose agriculture. And if I try to create this without a thumbnail, let's see what happens. Fill in all fields and choose a thumbnail. Even if I remove the title and then choose a thumbnail, let's see this is going to be my thumbnail if i try to submit i get the same message okay so we have to make sure everything is perfect before we create and now we should have a post okay so if i come back here to my post i have one post if i go to authors then i has one post now you can click it to see it you can even click it to read more about the post we can edit the post okay because we are the creator and if i go back home and click any other post that doesn't belong to me i'm not going to see those buttons okay because i'm not the creator of those posts right but for my post which is this i can go ahead and then edit or delete now let's go ahead and then edit this let's say this post has been edited right so of course i have to choose or select a category again you can select a different category and here i can decide to not upload a new thumbnail okay i can decide to keep the old thumbnail in that case i can update with the changes that i have and boom i have it with the old thumbnail or i can go ahead and then actually choose a new thumbnail okay now i'm going to change this to education and you know i can make changes however i want go ahead and then choose a new thumbnail i'm going to use this and now let's try it and update this post and boom we have a new thumbnail for our post right the title also changed as you can see and all that the category as well okay so that is basically it guys let's come back here and we can also delete right so just like here that we can delete, we can also delete from here as well. We can edit, delete and all that, right? So if I try and then delete this, boom, it should be gone. You have no post. If I come to the homepage now, I have no post. If I come to the authors, Dynai has no post. So that's it. All right, now one thing I want to do is to change the details but even before that i'm going to create another post okay i'm going to create a post one more time select this come back paste i'm going to use this for the title i'm going to leave it at uncategorized i'm going to set the thumbnail to i think that's cool and i hit create so now we have a post and i'm going to try and then change the thumbnail once more okay 
I'm going to change the avatar one more time. Upload it. Come back. And now I should have the new avatar. Okay. Of course, I have one post. And what I want to do is to change my details while I have posts on there. Right. I can do it without having posts. I can do it if I have posts as well. I'm going to change the name to Mensa. So Diana Mensa. And if I try to change the email to an already existing email, let's see what happens. So I have an email for a next achiever, and the email is achiever at gmail.com, which already exists, as I just said. And for our current password, that was Diana123. And for our new password, I'm going to say Diana12345. Diana12345. Now let's see what happens. Remember, this is someone's email. This email already exists. Okay, so let's try and then update. We get email already exists, right? This email is someone's email. If I go to authors, that's the email of a next achiever. This person. Okay. Right. Now if I try to change this to Mensa, which doesn't exist. Okay. So this should work and of course the password the current password is all right and everything should be okay right now if i update and now i need to enter the new credentials if i try to log in with the old credentials that's diana at gmail.com the password was diana123 if i try to log in with the old credential it shouldn't work right now the new one is mesa at gmail.com and the password is diana one two three four five right login i should be logged in if i check my name that's the author name is dynamensa and everything is looking just perfect okay i can go ahead and then change it back to the previous now the password is going to be diana that's the current password was diana one two three four five and the new password i'm going to change it to the first one that we used that's Dana123. Okay. And of course, the email, I'm going to change it to Diana at gmail.com. I hit update. I get logged out again. And I have to um, enter the credentials one more time. Diana at gmail.com. Diana123. Okay. So I think basically that's it. Okay. This is what we are going to create in this um, application. And we have a lot to do, so let's dive right in. So in the last video, this is where we ended. And of course, we created our controllers and everything to do with the API. Everything was working perfectly. And in the first video, that was the front end, we created all the pages for the project and some components as well. All right now looking at the whole project i think in this video the one thing that we should start with is going to be the user registration so right here we had all the controllers that had to deal with the user and the first controller that we had was the user registration right so i think we should dive right in and then register our users of course we need the name of the user the email password the confirm password you do some checks as you can see here to see if the email already exists we check for the password the number of characters for the password it should be more than six we check um, to see if the password matches the confirm password and all that okay and once everything is checked we go ahead and then we create an encrypted version or a hashed version of the password and then we save that to our database right so that's it and yeah so we are going to start with the registration of our user and that's going to be inside the front end so let's go to pages and then registration or register page right here i'm going to use axios to make our requests so let's first see it into our clients and Let's install Axios. You can use fetch if you want. 
but I'm going to use Axios. Let's bring that in real quick. Let's import Axios from Axios, right? I'm going to bring in use navigate as well. Use navigate, and that's coming from React router drone. I'm going to have another state variable here, which is going to be error, and that is going to be this error message that we have. Okay. Now remember when we were creating our controllers, we had some error messages in case of any problem, we pass in an error message, right? So in case, in case we get any error, basically from the server, this way we are going to get it. Okay. We are going to put it in this variable and then display it wherever we need to. In this case, in the register um, page is going to be in this paragraph tag. So let's have the state updating function as well. That's going to be set error. And that should be equal to use state. And it's going to be empty by default. Now let's have navigate be equal to use navigate. Now all we need to do is to create a function that is going to submit this form to our API. All right, so on submit, I'm going to call a function called register user come on register user yeah perfect so let's create that function right here register user should be equal to this should actually be a sync function and a sync function since we are going to use an await inside okay there's going to be a synchronous but as i said in case of any error we need to show the paragraph tag and then display that error inside so that error is going to be this message right here perfect all right so for the register user first of all let's prevent default the default submission of the form we should take an event and let's set error to be none initially right now I'm going to have a try catch in here as well, just like we did for the backend in the controllers. And I'm going to set error. That's in case any error occurred in the API, we get that error. I'm going to call this ERR instead. So error response data and then the message from the error. Now what we are going to do here is to make that request. So axios dot posts. Okay, remember for the register, the method is going to be post. That is going to be in our routes right here. User routes for the register method is post. Okay, so we should make sure this method matches what we have here. So it is a post request. And I'm going to put the host of our API as an environment variable that's going to be dot env let's have a dot env file here in our clients as well now remember we used a dot env in our server as well you know api and we had a port of 5000 right so for our front end let's have react app base url and that is going to be equal to http local host and the port was 5000 right here that's the port for our api and if you come to the index as you can see we used that here okay and let me actually use that here as well so app dot lesson to this port or we manually give it 5000 here okay so this is how it should be perfect so back in our dot env here in the client I'm going to add slash API and I'm going to duplicate this to have another environment variable and that's going to be for the assets that make it plural. Okay. I'm going to remove the slash API from that. Okay. So these are the two environment variables that we need for our client or so our front end. And let me quickly go ahead and actually have this project running. So for the clients, I'm going to do NPM start. And I'm going to have the server running as well. And that's going to be 
npm run dev okay so we have it on port 5000 perfect so our server is running and right here our front end is also running now let's go to the register page which is what we are working on and let's come back to our project right so now we can go ahead and then use the environment variable that we just created so that will be process dot env dot react app base url now we are going to add the path to the register page that's in the controller remember in the index we had slash api which we already have but we had users and then slash register which is inside of the user routes okay so we should match this path that we are trying to hit so we should have slash users and then register and there's the route we are trying to hit right now once we have this we should add a payload and the payload is going to be the user data that we have here all right so let's go ahead and that's going to be user data and that's it okay now let's get the new user that is registered and we can go ahead and log that in a console um if you don't have any user or if this didn't work then we are going to set error and we say couldn't register user please try again but if everything goes well we just go ahead and navigate to the slash or the home page all right so this is all we need for the register user let's come back to our react project i'm going to open the console all right now let's go ahead and then try registering a user okay remember in our database we already had some users let me go to our database real quick and this our database in users we already registered some users when we were creating the api that was john doe and jane doe okay and also an achiever right so these users already exist right now let's try and let's try registering those same users and see what happens right so i'm going to enter john doe the email is going to be john at gmail.com which already exists the password i'm going to do something very random which will not match and let's see what happens we get email already exists okay so the error that we pass in in case of any problem is being shown here right which is perfect now i'm going to go ahead and make sure i register a user that doesn't exist so daniel vino the email is going to be daniel at gmail.com it should be daniel in this case everything is good but the passwords do not match right so let's try and we get passwords do not match right so the password i'm going to do daniel one two three daniel one two three so now that everything matches let's see what happens and boom we've been registered of course after registration we should be taken to the login page instead okay but everything worked for the registration so let's see what happened in our database so i'm going to come back here and then refresh our users collection and boom we have daniel vino okay so daniel vino is now a registered user in our database or in our application perfect so that is all for registration that is all for registering our users now let's move on to logging in our users and before we work on the login i'm going to go ahead and then create an upward state for our user okay so when you log in you have to have a state that can be accessed in the whole application right so i'm going to use the context api for that so in a source i'm going to create actually let me create a folder context and inside that i'm going to have user context 
.js. Okay, now I'm going to import create context, use effect, and use state from React. Now let's create our context. User context is going to be equal to create context. Let's go ahead and then create our provider. User provider. And I'm going to destructure the children prop. Since this is going to wrap around the entire application. In this case, it's going to wrap around our layout. Okay, where is the parents of everything we have? on our application or in our application so in here i'm going to return user context dot provider passing the children the children prop and of course we have to give it a value but first let's have a state oh yeah right so let's have a state here and that's going to be the current user state and the state updating function set current user and that's going to be equal to new state and initially we want to fetch the current user from our local storage okay of course once the user logs in we are going to get the response that's the token the id and the name and then save it into the local storage so we want to check initially whether that user has anything in the local storage right so that would be json dot pass we want to pass anything that's coming from the local storage because everything that we save in the local storage is going to be a string we are going to stringify it during saving so when we are getting it back we have to pass it right so local storage dot get item and we are going to call it user right now let me actually pass in the value real quick and the value is going to be an object with the current user and also set current user perfect now let me have a use effect i'm going to have a function here local story dot set item user json dot stringify current user all right and that should happen whenever the current user changes okay Whenever the current user changes, that's in the login page or on the login page, we are going to set the current user once the user logs in, right? So when that changes, I want the um, user to be saved in the local storage, right? So the dependency array here is going to be the current user. And that's all we need here. First, let me go ahead and then export this before I close the file. I'm going to export default user provider perfect so now let's come back to our index.js in our client and wrap the layout with our user provider so user provider and i'm going to put the layout inside of that and that's all we need perfect all right so let's come back to our login I'm going to bring in user navigate from react router dom we are going to use axios here so let's bring in axios as well and i'm going to bring in the context that we just created and we exported the user context right here as a named export so let's bring that in const user context and that should be coming from context and then user context perfect uh what's wrong import perfect all right now i'm going to have an error state variable here as well why can i type so error set error is going to be empty initially and let's have navigate is going to be equal to use navigate let me bring in the values from the context okay now that's going to be the current user and the set current user 
right so the state and the state updating function that's the value that we pass which is an object so i can go ahead and then destructure that using use context which is coming from react so let's bring in use context and i can go ahead and destructure set current user from use context and then pass in the user context right so we are going to get this in here perfect now for the error of course in case of any error then we are going to show it and let's pass in the error right here and on submit we are going to call login user which is a function that we should create so const login user this should be a sync function as well of course this should take in an event so that we can prevent the default form submission so either prevent default and let's set the error to be empty initially unless i have a try catch here as well and in case of any problems we are going to set error here and that's going to be let me make it r e r r instead response data and then the message and looking back in the user controller that is going to be i just showed you that but let me show you that again any of these messages in case of any error okay that is what we are trying to get in here all right so let's go ahead and send a request and remember that is also going to be a post request for the login process dot env dot react app base url we will have users and then login right that's the route to our login controller in the api okay now we should have the payload which is going to be user data and that's it okay so once everything goes well we should have a user right and once we have a user then we can navigate to the home page perfect if you want you can navigate them to the profile page but i think the home page makes more sense all right so let's go ahead and then try logging in the user but then if we have a user that's if the user really got registered remember in the um in the user controller where is it come on we sent back the response we sent back was an object with a token an id and the name of that user who just logged in okay so we should save that in the context right that's going to be the current context value the state value of the context okay so let's go ahead and that is why we brought in the state updating function of that context right here so let's go ahead and then use that to save the current user and once that is saved right here using the use effect we are going to save that user in the um, local storage if that makes sense okay so let's go ahead and here let's set current user to be the user that just logged in all right so let's go ahead and try this out i'm going to you know what let me view this on the mobile that looks better so let's go to applications and local storage right now we have a user because i've been testing this with the completed application so let me go ahead and then delete this okay so we don't have any user okay so let's go ahead and go to the login page if i send this we are going to get filling all fields um let's log in as jindo but we had the wrong password let's see what happens invalid credentials and if we enter jane one two three where is the right password let's see what happens once i log in i'm going to get 
the objects and that is going to be saved in my local storage right which is the token so we get the token the name of the user and then the id of that user perfect and once we are logged in as you can see we are redirected to the home page which is really really nice all right so that is for the login now let's go ahead and work on the logout functionality as well we should be able to log users out and let's go to logout and in here i don't really need to return anything i'm just going to return the fragment the react fragment and let me bring in some stuff i'm going to bring in use context and also use effect all right let me bring in our context as well user context and also i'm going to bring in user navigate which should be coming from react route at all what i'm going to do here is very very simple i'm going to set the current user to now okay i'm going to set it to now and in turn here is going to set it in the local storage as well it's going to set it to now right so set current user should be coming from use context and then the user context and once i have that actually let me have navigate be equal to use navigate as well so once i have that i can set current user to be now and that's what we need here to log a user out once i log you out i want to take you back to the login page so let's go ahead and then try logging a user out let's see what happens okay i hit this logout and we get now okay so now the user is logged out logging the user in again let's see what happens you know for now of course we can go to the profile page and all that because we don't have the access control right now but we're going to work on that okay so let me get back to the login page and try logging in i have achiever registered so let's log in as achiever so achiever at gmail.com the password is going to be achiever one two three we log in and we have the token and the name and the id of the user right once we log out that should be now okay and we are redirected to the sign in or the login page okay now let's go ahead and work on the access control real quick but before that i want to you know the links that we have in the navbar these shouldn't be showing that's the achiever or the name of the user and the create post shouldn't be showing when they are not logged in okay so we should have that and then we work on the access controls now on the create post of course you shouldn't access this page if you are not logged in in the profile page as well the dashboard as well and a lot of the other pages edit post and all that okay you shouldn't be able to access those pages if you are not logged in so yeah let's first work on the header i want to show some links only if you are logged in i'm going to bring in my user context and let me destructure current user from that and of course i should bring in use context from react so that is going to be use context and then pass in the user context right now if we are logged in then we should have the user id right so if the current user dot id is available then we should show this an added list right otherwise we want to show something else so let me quickly duplicate this and i'm going to check if we do not have that if so then we are only going to show two links which are going to be the login and the authors okay if that makes sense let's just say login right so yeah as you can see so let's go to the login page and i'm going to log in as jane do so jane one two three let's log in and now we should have 
these links instead okay which is cool right so before we access this page and the other pages the, like the create post page we should be able to be logged in and right now even if we copy this link and we log out we can still access that page okay so let's go ahead and work on the access control now there may be a better way to do this but for me you know what let me first close all these files for me i'm going to get the user context i should bring in use context as well so I'm going to go ahead and then grab the current user from the context. So use context and then we pass in the user context. Once I have that current user, I can get the token. Remember this is an object, right? With the token, the ID and the name of the logged in user. So I can go ahead and then get the token from the current user. Okay, and once I have that, I can decide to log this user in. Okay, now if you are logged in, that is when you have the token. And if you are logged out, you do not have that token. So here I'm going to say redirect to login page for any user who isn't logged in. All right, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use use effect here and pass in a function. So if you do not have the token, then that means you can't be on this page. Okay. You cannot be on this page. And so we are going to navigate you to the login page. Therefore, we should bring in use navigate and that should be coming from react router DOM. I don't have that. So let's import use navigate from react router DOM. Right. So if you do not have the token, then that means you should be logged up or you should be taken to the login page instead to sign in right and let's see what happens so now that's for the create post as you can see we cannot access that page without being signed in okay now i'm going to um let's see let's quickly log in as john doe you know john doe is registered Right, so John one two three, assign in and see. Now we can access that page, which is the create post page. Okay, I'm going to copy that again. That's the routes, and then log out, and try accessing that page again and see what happens. We are redirected back to the login page. Okay, so that is the access control, and as I said, there may be a better way to do this, but this works as well okay and I'm just going to copy this and then paste it on all the pages that we want this restriction so you know let me copy from here so the create post is done at least for the access control I'm going to do same here and we should bring in the user context come on that should auto import what's happening it should bring in the user context and the use context hmm. very sad i have to bring that in manually user context should be coming from context user context right Let's go to delay posts. I should have that here as well. Oh, did I bring in use navigate? I did not. So I have to bring in use navigate here as well. And here, of course, I have to bring in use navigate, use context. And also user context. Let's go to edit posts. Then we can go ahead and paste.
yeah that is it right so we come back to our application and use effect is not defined dashboard interesting so let's go back to dashboard use effect what else delete post we did not bring in use effect I think here too and maybe here as well right now let's check out the application and everything should be working okay so let's go ahead and I'm going to sign in as achiever at gmail.com achiever one two three let me mess up I get in invalid credentials now I'm signed in and I have my details here and I can access these pages okay so the profile the dashboard even edit page and all of that right I can access all these pages but once I log out I'm going to copy the edit page for instance once I log out I cannot access these pages again okay so if I go back I'm going to be redirected all right so if I try accessing this page it won't work I'll be bounced back to the login page all right so I think we can move on to the next thing and that is going to be fetching the posts from the database all right so that is going to be here in the posts now since fetching data or fetching our post is going to be asynchronous that means it's going to take some seconds or fraction of a second for the post to be fetched okay so i'm going to have a very simple loader or a spinner and that's just going to help us visually for the users to know what is happening basically i'm going to do rafce here and i'm going to bring in an image a gif or a gif loading gif and that's going to be from our images and i have loading gif there okay now this is going to be inside a div let me give this a class of loader and let me actually wrap this inside a loader image class as well let me have the image and the source is going to be the loading gif and i'm going to leave the out okay so that is the loader that we are going to be using when we are fetching so let's come back here so once the page loads i want to run a function and i'm actually going to put that function inside a use effect so let me have a use effect here put a function in it and i'm going to call this function fetch posts it's going to be asynchronous of course but first the initial post is going to be an empty array so this dummy post i'm going to remove that i'm going to have another state variable here and that's going to be it's loading so the state updating function is going to be set is loading and that's going to be false initially right now once we start fetching i'm going to set it's loading to be true so that we get that spinner and so let me actually bring in the spinner that we just created or the loader right so I'm going to bring in loader if it's loading then return loader all right so in here I'm going to go ahead and have everything inside the try catch and in case there is any error then we can just log that in the console and this request is going to be get of course now uh, the route is going to be process.env if you can remember that is where we fetch all the posts okay this right here this way 
we fetch also the method is get and we get all the posts from the controller the post controller so when you come to here you get api slash post so once we have the post we are going to set the post to the new post that we just fetched okay so response the data right and that's all we need to do here and once everything is done we can go ahead and then set it's loading to be false again first of all this should happen only once once the page loads basically and then we call fetch posts okay we instantiate fetch posts and let's see what happens and i'm not read property of length really i think this should be description and yeah so we are actually fetching we, we are actually fetching from the database now so let's go into post item and then continue from there this should receive some props author id should be equal to the author id and also created that created that created that is not defined interesting okay maybe we didn't pass on that prop all right so let me get that right here okay that of course i should distract about here as well perfect so now hmm, we still have more bugs created that is not defined in here interesting okay so let's go into post author and bring in or get created at and we actually not using it here so what's the problem okay everything is working now all right so interesting we only have one post right let's check and yeah we only have one post okay now as you can see the images are not working and that's because we have to change the path for the image right so right here the env the react app assets slash uploads and then we have the thumbnail okay and remember also that we have them inside of the uploads folder that's why we have this uploads okay so now if i save this and come back to our project we should have the thumbnail now i think we are done in the post item we pass in the author id and the created that to the author of the post so let's go ahead and then work on this let's bring in the author id as well okay so we should fetch that author the creator of that post let's go ahead and have a use effect here and i'm going to have in a function get author which is going to be asynchronous try catch let's await axios dot get process dot env dot react users and then author id actually let me have a state here so once we have the author then we set author to the response that we got of course let's go ahead and then instantiate the function that fetches the author and down here remember the path now to the image is going to be process dot env we go into our uploads folder in the back end and then we get the author dot avatar so now let's try and check 
and we have a problem use state is not defined of course we should bring that in what else axios of course let me remove this avatar and then bring in axios then we are getting some issues and that should be coming from the posts gsx first of all we should be getting the underscore id the id from the database that's the object id by mongodb is underscore id so we should get that and then rename it to id okay and that is what we are going to use here so the warning for the key is now going to be resolved because of the id that we just brought in okay so yeah that should be resolved if i refresh we shouldn't have any problem with the unique key so let me rephrase this and now that is gone but i still have an issue and when we check our response you can see that our object id is undefined right here okay so the value is undefined and i think that's because of this we should get creator instead of the author id in the database we call it creator okay so we check the posts each post has a creator not author id so we get the creator and then we pass it in as a prop okay but the prop name is going to be author id so we get that here in the post item right here and then we pass it further to the post author and that is what we are going to use here so if i refresh so if i save this come back to our project we should now have this coming from the actual database all right so this should be coming from the database now i still have a problem and that is with the image and i think that's because we do not have an image or an avatar for the creator of this post that is why the avatar is undefined so let's quickly come to postman go to users and i'm going to log in as NS Achiever, who is the creator of that post, so that I can go ahead and then upload an avatar. So, to log in, of course, we only need an email and a password. And the email for that creator is achiever.gmail.com, and the password is going to be achiever123. If you watched the back end video, you should know what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this token. And then come to change avatar authorization bearer token and i'm going to paste the token i just copied right now for the body let's go to form data and for avatar i'm just going to change this to file and then choose a file so let's just use i'm going to use this person well let me actually use this and then i send and we should now have an avatar so if i come back to my project and then refresh now everything should be working all right so back here i'm going to get the name from author dot name and for the time you're going to use a library called time ago so that it tells you how long the post or the article was posted okay instead of the actual time it's going to tell you maybe it was posted just now or 10 minutes ago or a week ago something like that okay so let's install that package real quick and that is going to be inside of our client let me actually open another terminal and then cd into the client so let's install react time ago and javascript time ago okay that's done so let's come back here and then import react time ago and i'm also going to import time ago from javascript time ago now i'm going to import two more things that's en from javascript time ago slash locale slash en dot json let me duplicate this and import ru from javascript time ago locale and then ru.json you can of course read more about javascript time ago and then 
react time ago so that you understand everything about it down here i'm going to do time ago dot add default local and that's going to be the en and i'm going to duplicate this and then pass in the ru as well all right that's all we need here now let's come down to where we want to display our time ago and then bring in the react time ago component all right now this takes two props the first is going to be the date and that's going to be our created at okay so i'm actually going to create a new date from that and then pass in the created at and the second prop is going to be the locale and that's going to be en dash us all right so we save this come back to our project and now we have one week ago um, this post was actually created a week ago right now ignore these errors ignore the errors okay so let me actually since i'm logged in in the postman as an s achiever let me try and then add a new post okay so let me go to create post and form data i'm going to pass in the the token from the login okay so let me copy that and then pass in that bearer token of course so back to the body to create a post we need a title we need a category we need a description and lastly we need a thumbnail which is going to be a file all right so for the title let me say second post by ns achiever category let me do art I know I made a mistake with description, but that's fine. And let's choose a thumbnail. And I'm going to use, I don't know, let me use this. Let's create this post. Okay, so we have another post. Now, if we come back and then refresh our page, we should have that new post. Okay, and that was posted just now, right? So that is working. You can see the categories, ads, and everything is working perfectly. So that's all for our post author and now we can move on to a single post okay so we should be able to, of course we should be able to click the title so that we get the details or we see everything that this post entails okay so let's go to post detail and back in post author this should be add local okay yeah right here add local and then you pass in are you right but this one should be add default local right so back in post detail we should go ahead and then work on this but in our project of course once we click any of the titles of the posts we should be taken to the post detail page and we are getting this error because of the post author that we have it on here okay so i'm going to comment that out for now and now we should have our post detail page right but then this shouldn't be available if we are not the creator of that post okay if we are not the creator of this post this button that's the edit button and the delete buttons shouldn't be available for us right so we are going to do something here first of all let me bring in use context i'm going to bring in use effect and also use state from react okay and let me actually go ahead and bring in some more stuff i'm going to bring in user context that's the context that will be created and also i'm going to bring in delete post all right so that is what we need for the imports so down here i'm just going to remove all these as for the description we're going to remove that But now i'm going to leave it empty yeah so if i come back this context okay so we have that already all right so let's go ahead and then make our api request so that we can fetch the post from the database now as you can see we have the id of the post so we are going to use this to fetch that post from the database so i'm going to get the id from the params so I'm going to bring in use params from React Router DOM and get the ID of the post that we are trying to get. 
and I'm going to have some state variables here post set post I'm going to duplicate this a few times so we have posts I'm going to have creator ID you can name it author ID like before error and lastly I'm going to have a loading set is loading and this is going to be false now, as I said if I'm not a creator then this button shouldn't be showing or shouldn't be available for me so first I'm going to get the current user and that's going to be coming from our user context so use context and then we pass in our user context And also before we even render this container, Dave, we should make sure we have something in the post. We should make sure our post is not now. I'll just close this here. And lastly, I'm going to make the delete button a component. Okay, so let's, and in here we are going to have a link, which is coming from React Router DOM. Let's give this a class name of BTN sm and then danger and that should be it for now okay this should say delete All right that should be it for now so back here should make sure that is imported and we have it so i'm going to render our delete post right here and it's actually going to take some props but let's leave it for now for us to be able to edit or delete a post from the post detail page we should be the creator of that post right so what I'm going to do here is to check that to make sure the reader is the creator of that post before he or she sees those buttons. Okay, so I'm going to check if the current user ID or the ID of the current user is the same as the ID of the creator of this post that we are fetching from the API. Okay, so post creator, if they are the same, then of course we can go ahead and then show these buttons. If not, then these buttons are not going to show. Okay, so that's why we have the user context, and then we destructure the current user from that. I hope that makes sense. All right. So now, if we come back to our project, so we don't see it because we are not logged in as an achiever. Who is the current user? I hope that makes sense. But if I go ahead, let me quickly go to login. If I go ahead and then log in as an achiever, so in this case the email is going to be achievergmail.com and the password is achiever123. If I log in, uh, current user ID post. Okay, we are not fetching the post from the database yet. Okay, that's why we don't see it. All right, so let's go ahead and then fetch the post. But before that, we are going to have a loader that's the loader or the spinner that we had we created we are going to have that component okay so now let's go ahead and then fetch the post from the database through our api okay so that is going to be inside our use effect and be passing a function and it's going to run once it's going to be an async function I'm going to say get post should be equal to a sync and first i'm going to set loading to be true and i'm going to have everything in here inside a try catch in case we have any error i'm going to set error and then pass in the error that we get or the, any error that we have so now response is going to be await axios process dot env post id passing the idea of that post okay so once we have that we are going to set post to the post we just got and that's going to be response data right and also i'm going to set the creator of that post i'm going to set creator id so set creator id is going to be a response data dot creator i hope that makes sense right because we are going to make another request or we are going to pass that in to this post author component so that we can fetch that data as well all right so 
once everything is done i'm going to go ahead and then set its loading to be false and i'm going to call the function we just created so that the request gets fetched okay so now we should be able to fetch that request All right so let me come back here and now since we are the creator of this post we are seeing everything in here okay we are seeing it we are seeing the post at least the title right now okay so let's remove the hard coded title and then bring in post dot title and the thumbnail as well the thumbnail is going to be post dot thumbnail so we save we come back and that shouldn't work because of course that's not the actual route for our post thumbnail it should be process dot env dot react app assets url and then the thumbnail but first we have to go into our uploads folder and they should be thumbnail like this all right so now let's see and thumbnail okay it should be post dot thumbnail right so we save and now we have the thumbnail of that post okay of course we should show the description or the body of the post and that's going to be inside the paragraph tag and we should make sure we give this a prop of dangerously set html okay without this it's not going to show because remember in the react we are using react quail to create the body for the post okay and that's going to include or that's going to have some tags and yeah so you should just know you should have this before this works okay so that's going to be post description all right so we save this and now we have the description of the post okay and i think that's it right yeah that's it of course for the delete post let's go ahead and then add post id as a prop which is going to be the id of the post which should be deleted we are going to work on the delete post real soon and for the post author we should add author id and that's going to be post or creator right so we didn't even need to say creator and all that i'm going to remove this hope that makes sense and i'm going to add created that which is going to be post dot created that all right so we save this come back and we have this perfect all right and we have a problem with our loader i think we missed a class so let me quickly go back to our loader and i don't know if i had any styles for this loader before adding those classes but i'm not sure i'm not sure if i if i had any styles for it so let me quickly go ahead and then i'm going to have some styles for our loader i'm going to position it fixed give it a top of zero left zero height 100 viewport height width of 100 viewport width this should be width i'm going to display it grid and place items to the center loader image give it a width of 4.5 frame and a height of i'm just going to do aspect ratio of one is to one so now let's see okay it's smaller but i'm actually going to give this one a background of color bg all right so now yeah this should be perfect okay let me close this i mistakenly clicked on the author and now we are not fetching the author id so of course we should have an error 
but as you can see we have a perfectly working loader okay perfect all right so now let's move on to fetching our category posts and our author posts okay we should be able to click on the author to fetch all posts that belongs to that author or click on the category to fetch all posts that belongs to that category all right so let's quickly move on to that before that for the edit link this should be yeah so we should have the id of that post underscore id and then the edit okay i hope that makes sense let me have a comma here in case of so now let's move on to fetch the category posts and then the author posts okay so let's do author posts first um i'm going to close all the files that we don't need that we are not using and this is going to be very similar to the posts or fetching the posts in the home page so i'll just copy everything from here including the return and then paste that in here so i'm going to remove this dummy post import we don't need it and what do we need here of course we need to bring in the loader the route here is going to change so it's going to be posts slash users and then the id of the user or the author of the post that we are trying to fetch and that's going to come from the params so let's bring in use params from react router dom and get the id it's going to be a get request as well and i actually think that's all guys so let's try and then click on any of the authors let's see we need use effect what else axios of course and that's it okay so i'm going to click this author and for some reason we have a problem click interesting okay yeah right so let's go back to our posts that is where we clicked that link actually that should be post item the author okay that should actually be inside here we should be getting the author id right so now if we save come back to our projects and we hover this should be the actual id of the creator of this post okay so if you click you should get all the posts that belongs to that user all right now i'm going to go ahead and sign in as a different user real quick i'm going to sign in as jane doe so jane at gmail.com is the email jane123 is going to be the password i'm going to log in copy this token so that i create a new post so i'm going to say first post by jane doe there's going to be education as the category there's going to be the description and i'm going to choose a different thumbnail for this just going to use this one so now we should have another post and oh i did not pass in the token god my, my bad so i created a post but the token was an sachivist token so yeah that makes sense right i'm going to copy the token again and this is jindo's token right come back here 
and then paste it in the authorization right token so now in the body i showed this should be jane do and i'm going to send this and now we should have a post by jane do okay so as you can see this coming from jane do right so if i click this user we should have only one post by jane do if i click this one we have three posts by an achiever i hope that makes sense okay so that's all for the author posts or fetching posts that belongs to an author and it's going to be very similar to fetching posts that belongs to a particular category so right here author post i'm going to copy everything and come to category posts I'm going to highlight everything and then paste the author post so i'm going to change this to category posts and we are just going to change some things around the route is category so then the category we are trying to fetch so we should bring that from our parameters and let's see let's try i think that's all let's try and then see what happens so i'm going to click this and you can see we have two posts that belongs to the same category okay and i have two thumbnails or two of the same thumbnails because when i was creating jane Doe's post i didn't change the thumbnail right i hope that makes sense all right so for the ads category we click and then we get only one post we can also click any of these and it's not working for now so let's go ahead and in our footer so this should be going to post categories and the use effect the dependency array is going to be the category right so let's see so now once i click it should make a new request For ads, we have only one post. We don't have any post for entertainment. For education, we have two posts. For agriculture, we have one post. For weather, we have no post. Okay. Actually, for the author posts, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to pass in the ID of the author as the dependency array. Alright, so I think the next thing is to move on to the authors. We should be able to fetch all the registered users from the database through our API. Right, so let's move on to that next. And that is going to be authors right here. I'm going to remove this dummy array and remove these avatar imports as well. So this is going to be an empty array. I'm also going to have a loading. Let's bring in use effect and create a function here to fetch all the authors. So use effect, I'm going to have a function inside of that. And it's going to be an empty dependency array. And let's have set is loading. I'm going to have everything inside the try catch. I'm actually going to put this inside a function called get authors, right? Because this is going to be an asynchronous function. And we shouldn't pass in an asynchronous function directly to a use effect. Okay. So here I'm going to paste what I just cut and i'm going to make our request using axios and this is going to be a get request right process dot env react app base url uses okay we are fetching all the users that's registered to our application and then once we have them we are going to set authors to 
the response data that we just got all right and that's all we need to do here and once everything is done i'm going to set its loading back to false and get authors everything should work as early as expected so now let's see what we get all right of course these are the registered users that we have in our database if i go back and then show you we have only four users in our database we have john doe jane doe nice achiever and daniel vino which are these people okay now of course we should make sure that the image is rendered well okay so that's going to be process we go into our uploads and then the avatar so we save that now we have the avatar for all of the users and i think daniel vino does not have an avatar that's why yeah of course he doesn't have an avatar that's why we have no image yet okay so we have the count of the post as well right here and the next achiever of course has three posts and then jendo has one post the rest have no post and that is all we need to do um we don't have the s loading so if we are now loading and that's if it's loading is true then we are going to return loader which we don't have okay so let me go ahead and then bring in loader from it's going to be inside the component loader yeah okay so we go to all this and then it loads for a fraction of a second before we get them perfect okay so of course we can click or we should click any of these so that we get all the posts that belongs to the author so we should make sure that works as well inside of the link post users this should be underscore id so we can give an alias of id okay so now it should work it should be underscore id but we can give it an alias of id all right so now we come back and if we click we should be able to fetch the posts that belongs to the author right and this person has no post as well as john doe so everything is working now okay so i think we are done here and the next thing we need to do is to be able to create edit and delete a post okay we should show the actual details of the logged in user here in our profile page as well and also for the dashboard we should be able to show the posts that belongs to the current logged in user so i think we should move on to create posts next and then we will move on to edit post and then finish up with the user profile and the dashboard so let's go to create posts and we have a form we have a form down here and on submit of this form we want to call a function called create post with a lowercase c so let's go ahead and then create that function And that's actually going to be an asynchronous function. Uh, I have to prevent default, so I'm going to pass in an event and say e dot prevent default, right? So that we prevent the default submission of the form. All right. So we have title right here. We have category. We have um, the description and the thumbnail okay so we should have all these and then send it to the api as a post request right so let's create a form data from that i'm going to say post data is going to be equal to new form data 
and post data we are going to set first our title which is going to be the title that we got from the form and i'm putting them all in a state variable okay so i have title category description and thumbnail right if you watched the front end video then this shouldn't be new to you so i'm going to duplicate this three more times it's going to be category and that's going to be category we are going to do description and these names that i'm giving showed much um what we are trying to accept or what you're trying to get from the api okay so it should match else that's not going to work and i'm making sure they match as well here since i created the api i know what i'm doing right and lastly we are going to have our thumbnail which is going to be equal to a thumbnail state variable okay now once i have that i'm going to have a try catch here and let's send our request which i said is going to be um, do we have azios here let me make sure that it's imported azios from azios so let's send our request and this is going to be a post request post we make a post request to this so we have the route next we are going to pass in the payload which is going to be post data this which carries every detail that we need in the form and lastly we have options okay now it should be logged in before you can create a post and here we are going to set with credentials to true and also i'm going to set headers i'm going to set some headers here and the only header that i need here is authorization i'm going to have my barrier token okay so if you are trying to reach this route i want there to be a barrier token in the header if everything goes well we should get a response status of 201 and once we have that we know everything went well so we are going to navigate to slash which is the posts page or the home page which is going to have all the posts right but if we have any errors then we are going to show it in the error paragraph that we have here okay so do i have a state for that i don't think i do so i'm quickly going to go ahead and create error and set error and that's going to be equal to use state and it's going to be empty initially right but in case we have any error then we are going to show it It's going to be a paragraph tag with a class of error and then we pass in that error perfect so in case we encounter any error we are just going to set error to err response data and then the message the error message so i think that is all we need here and so let's go ahead and then try creating a post okay so let's come here let's try to create a post and i'm logged in let me actually log out and log in as john do and that's going to be john at gmail.com the password is john123 all right so i'm currently logged in let's go to create post wait a minute why do i have an sh right here of course in the header i showed show the name of the currently logged in user so i'm going to show the current user dot name and now we have john doe of course i should remove this perfect so let's go to create post again for the title i'm going to just copy some stuff from laura mixon right so copy this for the body and i'll grab something for the title i'm going to set this to investment and then choose a thumbnail for this post i'm going to use this 
Now let me choose something else. I don't want any copyright issues. So go into my images and I'll choose this image right here and let's submit and see what happens. And now it works. Okay. So John Doe now has a post, right? We can of course click the author and we only have one post for John Doe. We can click the category and we have only one post for the investment category. We can of course click the title to read more about the post. And since John Doe is the creator of this post, we have edited and delete, right? Perfect. So that is working. And if we check our database, we go to posts. We should have one post by John Doe right here. Okay. Check the ID BC0A. That should be the ID of John Doe. BC0A. Right. So our create post is working. And let's try to submit without okay without filling the form we get this error but the error is not well styled the class name should be form error message instead okay so i save this and now this is what we have right so fill in all fields and choose a thumbnail i'm going to fill the form let me leave it at uncategorized so i have a description the title and the category without a thumbnail let's try and then submit and see what we get we still get the same thing so i'll just choose a thumbnail for this next post and i'm going to use this and then create a post and we have it right perfect interesting we have a problem the paragraph tags shouldn't be here okay we shouldn't have these paragraph tags and let's go to post item that is where we show our paragraph we are going to have dangerously set HTML and set HTML to short description okay so now we shouldn't have those paragraphs right perfect so everything is working guys everything is working we should be able to log out and right now John Doe has two posts okay everything is working as early as expected so now we should be able to edit posts okay so if you're a current logged in user like achiever at gmail.com you should be able to edit all your posts okay so of course, since I'm not the creator of this, I can't do that. But if I come to my posts, I should have access to these buttons to be able to edit my posts, right? So let's go ahead and edit our posts, which I think is going to be very similar to create posts. So let's go to edit posts. To edit a post, we need the idea of the post we are trying to edit, right? So let's go ahead and then get that from the params okay so i'm going to get use params from react router dom and get the id of the post right from there okay and once we have the id we should make a request to get the post from our database okay through our api so right here i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put this inside the effect and of course this is going to be an asynchronous function so let me get post as an async function try catch in case of any errors we just log that to the console response is going to be await axios.get the post we are trying to edit so that will be slash posts slash the idea of that post and once we have that we are going to set title so we have title and category description and thumbnail the user has to manually change the category but the thumbnail is also optional okay so we are only going to set the title and the um, and the body or the description of the post so set title is going to be response 
data dot title I'm going to duplicate this for set description and here is going to be description okay perfect now we have to instantiate get post the function we just created all right so we get the posts and the form is going to be filled with that post so for instance if i come back here i just not defined of course let's bring that in so let's bring in axios and come back here and now we have this okay if i go back to any other post by an achiever this one for instance we go to edit we have this okay so we get the title and the description but we should be able to change or, or choose the category manually okay and of course we don't get the thumbnail as well of course we should be able to update without the thumbnail or we can of course choose a new thumbnail to update this post if you watch the api video then you understand how we went about the controller for this function okay or you know, for this functionality all right so let's come back here and for this i'm going to just remove it and paste in the error message in case we have any error and of course let's have a state for that error set error use effect use state and it's going to be empty initially in case there is anything in the error then we show it otherwise it won't show of course perfect so on submit of this form we should call edit post okay so let's create that function real quick it is going to be on the same function let's have an event in here and then prevent the default submission of forms right and just like we did for the create post this is going to be very similar so i'm just going to copy everything here and then paste it okay so we get a title the category description and in case they choose a new thumbnail of course we should get that as well and send the request and the method for this is going to be patch and it should be the same route right here we should have the token as well and in this case it's going to be 200 okay so if the request status is 200 then that means everything went well so we can go ahead and navigate to the home page right and i think that's it so let's go ahead and then try editing this current post and see what happens this post has been edited all right i'm going to set this to weather this is the description of the edited post and i'm not going to choose any thumbnail let's see what happens not found okay interesting so this is the wrong route for the edit of course we should pass in the id of the post we are trying to edit okay and that's going to be id right the id we got from the params okay yeah so let's go ahead and i'm going to go back click on this try and edit it again let's see what happens this post has been edited change this to business maybe this is the come on this is the description or body of the edited post all right and i'm going to edit this without a thumbnail let's see what happens and it's been edited right here where is it right here okay 
Now, if you want, that's from the database. You can choose not to make that the first post or, you know, we sorted by updated. Okay, that is why the newly updated post comes first. Okay, if you want, you can sort by created post and it's still going to remain where it should be. That's below here, but it doesn't really hurt anything. Okay, so of course as you can see the post has been edited and this is the description of that post the category has been updated as well and of course that's it we can go ahead and edit the thumbnail as well and i can actually use an avatar for this thumbnail and you can see that this works okay so we are done with the edit post we are done with the edit post. Now I'm going to try editing without some fails. And I get this, okay? If I enter the title without a description, I still get filling all fails, right? Perfect. So that's for the edits. Now let's move on to delete post. Now there are two places where we can delete posts. So on the detail page, that's the post detail page, you can delete if you are the creator of that post. Or here in the dashboard, you can also delete from here, okay? So the delete component that we are going to, or the delete function that we are going to have should be able to take care of the post or delete that post wherever we delete it. All right, so here, I'm going to bring in use location as well. Right, and let me bring in ice use. On click of the delete button, we should have and then passing the ID of that post that we are trying to delete. Okay, so remember in the post detail page, we have this delete component and then. As a prop, we have post ID of the post that we are trying to delete, right? Perfect. So let's create our remove post function, which is an asynchronous function since we are going to communicate with our database through our API. So let's try catch. And for the catch, I'm just going to console log. And for the try, Axios dot delete post and then the ID of the post we are trying to delete. Okay, we need some options here. And first of all, with credentials, it's going to be true. And we will set some headers as well. And the only header we are going to set is going to be authorization. And that's going to be bearer. And then it's okay. And with this, if everything goes well, we should have a response status of 200. And in that case, let's check the location, right? As I said, we are going to be able to delete from two places. That is uh, to the post missing initializer. It should be response. If where we deleted the post is the dashboard page, then I'm only going to refresh that page, okay? But if we went to the post detail page and then we deleted the post from there, then we are going to come back to the home page, right? So if the location path name is equal to, if so, then we are on the dashboard page, right? And therefore I want to say navigate zero. That means we want to refresh that page. Otherwise we want to go to the home page. Okay. We want to navigate to the home page and I hope that makes sense right so I'm going to go ahead and ID is not defined delete post actually the ID should be coming from here instead okay let me distract your post ID make sure that is what I passed in Okay, post ID. 
I'm going to destructure that and give it an alias of ID. Okay, so that's it. And let's try to delay the post. So I'm currently logged in as Celeste Achiever. This post that we just edited, I'm going to go ahead and hit delete and see what happens. And I guess I have a problem. Let me come back. Okay, so the post actually got deleted, but we weren't navigated to the um, to the home page. All right, let me go ahead and then delete another post by an S achiever, and nothing happens. Interesting, but the post got deleted, of course. Okay, so it should be response this right here okay so response dot status should be equal to 200 that was a mistake so now if i go ahead and delete yeah we should be taken to the home page okay let me go ahead and then create another post a very dummy post right here choose the thumbnail I'm going to choose this create that post so we have a new post. I hit delete and we are taken to the home page. Beautiful. All right. So that's for the delete. And now we can move on to the user profile page. Or actually, let's go to the dashboard page. Okay. I'm going to bring in use params because we are going to get the ID of the user whose post we want to show, right? So use params. I'm going to bring in Axios. So let's import Axios. And also I'm going to bring in our loader. Okay, our spinner. Right here. Come on. From going into a component loader. Perfect. I shouldn't have deleted the previous state so your state and it's going to be an empty array initially let's have it's loading I set is loading your state is going to be false initially okay so we should go ahead and then make a request it's going to be inside a use effect to get the posts that belongs to the current user the logged in user so actually i'm going to have the id i'm going to get that from our param okay perfect let me make sure that is it i don't know if it is id or user id that is for the dashboard right ID okay so we get the ID and we should make a request so inside our use effect we are going to have a function and a dependency array is going to be empty or oh, actually let me pass in the ID okay we're going to have a function fetch posts is going to be an asynchronous function of course and let's set is loading to be true initially for the start okay so in that case if it's loading is true then we should return our loader so let's have a try catch and for the try let's have our request axios.get slash posts slash users and then the user id so we are getting all the posts that belongs to that user pretty much like author posts okay pretty much like you clicking uh posts it's not defined dashboard 41 yeah it's not defined well this should be plural yeah, so pretty much like you clicking the author of any post to fetch all the posts that belongs to the author. Now with this, we are going to 
have some options first is going to be with credentials we are going to set that to true and then we'll have some headers and the only header we need is authorization where it's going to be bearer and then the token which we already have in here okay so if everything goes well we should have all the posts that belongs to that user and then we update our state so if i come back and i go to okay let me make sure that's in here user profile this link has the id of the current user dot id all right so let's go back click and we have nothing what's going on let's see okay so of course fetch posts fetch posts i have to instantiate the function okay right so now we should have the posts we should have all the posts that belongs to an s achiever let me come back click and this take it forever for some reason said it's loading should be set to false once we have a response okay so once we have a response yeah we set it to false okay so we should have the image and of course we should pass the full route to that image we go into the uploads and then we have the posts dot thumbnail all right so now we should have the thumbnail for that post okay perfect so let me actually go ahead and then create another post for the next achiever is going to be the description the title is going to be let me copy from here let's create this post so now and this achiever has two posts we come to our dashboard and we can see it okay so we should make sure on click off any of these link we go to the actual route that relates to the post close this so on click of this we should view the post and the post detail page so back to the dashboard this should take us to post underscore id and this should be underscore id as well and finally underscore id okay so we should be able to view this post let me go back we can edit the post the title is too long so i'm just going to remove this let me actually shorten it even more and i'm going to update this and now it's been updated as you can see and even if i go back here it's been updated and i should be able to delete it from here as well so if i hit delete that post should be deleted um, and that didn't work so let's see of course we should bring in the delete component so delete post and pass in post id and that should be equal to the post dot underscore id right so now if we come back here if we try deleting this post the post has been deleted we should actually have a loader and okay for the delete post we should have a loader here as well right so once we are making the request 
I'm going to have a loader here. Okay, so let me import loader. And I'm going to set this loading. It's going to be false initially. It's going to be true here. And once everything is done, we are going to set it to We are going to set it to be false one more time. We are going to set it to be false again. Okay, so if I come back to the project and I try deleting this, okay, and I didn't even render the the loader. So if this loading is true. I want to return the loader. Okay, so let me go ahead and then create another post by the current logged in user. That's an achiever. And I'm going to use this. Hit create. A post has been created. I go to the dashboard and try deleting. Okay, so now the loader works. All right, but that, that was weird, but you get the idea so that is it for the delete post and we should move on to the profile page okay we should be able to update the avatar and all of that and the user details this is the last page of the entire application this is the user page and here we should be able to update the user avatar or the user profile picture and also the user details the name email and the password right so for the avatar we should be able to have an icon or a button here which is going to be the edit button that we can click to choose or select an image and then this check button will appear so that we can click to actually make this happen okay so on click of this check we should communicate to our api and through that we save the image in our backend and also save the name of that image in our database okay so of course we will delete the previous avatar okay so in this case if i should select a new image this current one should be deleted from our backend um we should display the current user's name and an h1 this is hard coded so that should be the current user dot name should be the same thing right but if we log in as a different person let me quickly log in as john doe so john at gmail.com john123 for the password and come back here you can see that we have john doe as the current logged in user okay all right now i'm going to have a state value here i'm going to call it is avatar touched and the state updating function is going to be set is avatar touched use state and it's going to be false initially okay so i'm going to use that to determine whether we should show this icon or this button this submit button right so down here there's a check button this is where it is so if it's avatar is touched then we want to show that button otherwise we don't want to show it okay so now we should have this button instead which can be used to select the image perfect all right so we should have a function that we can call on click of this so that we can change that avatar once it is selected okay so on click of this we should call change avatar handler that's a function we are going to call for us to be able to change this avatar And this is going to be an async function. So on click of this right here, this label right here, which um, which is linked to this input, and that is this 
icon right here on click of that we should be able to select the new avatar okay and in that case the avatar state value gets updated right here okay so we update our avatar state value now this should be empty initially this should be empty so i'm, go I'm going to remove the dummy avatar that we had before so this should be empty initially but once we select a different avatar right here like this once we choose a different avatar it should be the value the new value in that state right and so once we have that we can go ahead and click on the button this button right here which is going to communicate to our api and then upload the newly selected file or avatar in our backend okay so that's basically what we are going to do so once we click this label okay which is this right here which looks like a button once we click it we actually want to set its avatar touched we want to set that to true okay so that this button appears okay for submission of the form i hope that makes sense so on click of this we want a function an anonymous function which is going to set its avatar touched to true all right so let me refresh this page if i select an avatar right now you can see we can go ahead and then click this to submit that to our api or to make the request to our api i hope that makes sense right perfect so let's come back here and go ahead and work on the request so once the request is being made i'm going to set its avatar touched to be false okay and let me have everything in here inside the try catch so let's have a post data which is going to be equal to new form data and the only post data we need is going to be avatar okay that's the only thing we are trying to change here then that's going to be equal to the avatar state value which will be updated once we click to select an image okay so once we have the post data we can go ahead and communicate with our api so let's await axios and this is going to be a post request slash users slash change avatar now the second argument is going to be the post data and lastly we are going to need some options okay the first is going to be with credentials which is going to be true and we are going to attach some headers to this request the only header we need is authorization which is going to be bearer and then the token and once we have a response we are going to set avatar to the response data the avatar okay and i hope that makes sense and currently we are not even going to see the image once it gets um, updated so let me go ahead and then work on that real quick the route has changed because when we come back here this is where the image should or the avatar should show okay so slash uploads and then the avatar okay so in this case we will send the avatar as a response back and we will set it to be the new state value of the avatar the new avatar state value if that makes sense all right so let's go ahead and then try this out okay so i'm going to refresh this page and i'm going to get i'm actually this gen john doe right let me just use a random avatar for this person and then send this and let's see what happens and boom we have it if i go to my uploads right now let's see okay so if we check our authors we have you can see that we have only three avatars just like we have here okay so everything is working as early as expected if i should go ahead and then change it again right now i'm john doe i'm going to go ahead and then change this and we have a problem okay and here the avatar is not showing because we are not making any request that 
update that um, avatar state okay so what we are going to do is whenever we come to this user profile page we should fetch the user of this account okay that is what we should do so that we can fetch the user details and then even display some in this form okay so of course this should change as well so that is going to be in the headers for that user this right here and then the user id okay so current user dot id so now if you come back and then click we should have the actual id of that user okay as i said we should go ahead and then fetch that user so let me close this we are currently working on the we are currently working on the user profile so let me close all these and let's go ahead and then fetch this user get user is going to be a synchronous axios dot get slash users and then the id of that user with credentials true I'm going to pass in some headers and the only header we need is authorization and i'm going to set that to vera token right so once i get the user i'm going to go ahead let me actually just destructure the name email and the avatar from the response then i'm going to set name to be the name that i just got set email to be the email that i just got and then set avatar to be the avatar that i just got oh current user and of course you have to call get user we have to instantiate it before this works okay so now we have the current login users avatar all right so anytime i come to this page that request is going to be made and i'm going to fetch that users avatar right here and as you can see we have the name and the email inside here as well so of course we can go ahead and then even test this out a few more times so i'm going to use this person submit and i have it okay so if you come back to our project inside of this in our app loss, this uh, as you can see this is the new image and the old one has been deleted now let's move on to updating the user details and this error shouldn't be showing by default it should be hidden unless we have an error updating our user details right so let me remove this do i have any error state i hope i do i don't okay so let's have an error state here set error user state and it's going to be empty initially right so here if we have any error then we want to show this paragraph and whatever is inside that error for submit of this form we should call a function update user detail or update user details whatever and let me have that function right here const update user details is going to be an asynchronous function and of course we have to prevent default so e dot prevent default let's create a form data so user data is going to be a new form data we need a name which is going to be the name we need an email we need the current password and these names should match what we are trying to get in the request okay back in the um in the back end user controller 
right here hello update or edit user right here okay so we get current password new password and then confirm new password as well okay so we should make sure these names match what we have in here okay let me duplicate this twice so we have new password confirm new password and i should make sure i have variables confirm new password new password current password perfect okay so we have everything set for the form and we can go ahead and then make the request okay so response is going to be await axios and there's a patch request so process dot env dot react base url users slash and date user the payload is going to be the user data object and with credentials is going to be true also headers we need authorization which is going to be bearer token nice and if everything goes well with the response status is equal to 200 then everything went well so we can log the user out so that he or she can log in with the newly updated details okay so we will log you out so we just navigate to the logout page which will log the user out okay now let me actually have this in a try catch i'm going to have everything in here in a try catch right so in case we have any problem then we are going to catch that right here all right so let's go ahead and try this out i'm currently logged in as john doe i can go ahead and then change the name to john doe one now if you can remember in the back end we had some checks right so if i try to update to an email that already exists for instance achiever gmail.com which is someone's email there's not going to work okay they shouldn't work now let's see let's have our current password now the new password i'm going to make it john one two three four john one two three four right now let's try and submit this and see what we get we get email already exists okay so this email belongs to someone okay now on the current password let me mess that up and see what happens i'm going to make this john one let's try and we get invalid current password right now let me make the uh, current password the right one and then let me mess up with the confirmed password for the new password and we get new passwords do not match okay so we have every check working as um, as we had in the backend okay so now the new email for john Doe is going to be john1 at gmail.com and the new password is john1234 let's try and then update this and if everything goes well we get logged out and now we need to log back in okay using the new details of john Doe. So if I should use the old details, so john at gmail.com and the password john123, this shouldn't be possible because these credentials don't match any registered user, okay? So the new details for John Doe is going to be john1 at gmail.com and the password john1234. So now I log in and boom, I'm in, okay? So you can see the name is John Doe 1, right? I can go ahead and change the avatar to this man and now i have a new avatar for john doe i can change these details back to the original one so the current password in this case is going to be john one two three four right and i'm going to change it now to a new password one two three and confirm password one two three right so let's update these details again We've been logged out let's log in come on let's log in join at gmail.com the password 
Just one, one, two, three. And now we should be back to what we had previously. That's the original John Doe. Okay, so that is all for this entire project. I've covered everything that this application has to offer and I'm going to end this here. All right, so in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this application, both the front end and the back end, so that this application works online so your friends and family can try this app wherever they are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.